Welcome, my lovelies. I'm Lady McCreepster. It's time for a long overdue visit with Frank and Teddy and Darren Rogers. Author Life is Strange Me Too has, in fact, finished the series a while ago. So I'm thinking we complete the series too over the next week or so. For those of you who are unfamiliar with this series, a link to the playlist of all the episodes is in the video description below. So come, lean in closer, and we'll begin. I closed my eyes and rubbed my aching head, trying to remember how things had spiralled so far out of control. It had started with a little typo, and now I'm having my own little apocalypse right here in my living room. Look, Satan, I said, I don't know why you're here on Earth, but can it wait? I'm trying to finish a novel right now. Well, I could come back after you've finished, but I was hoping to get out of hell before it froze over, Satan said. I sighed. If you were going to show up uninvited, could you have at least given me a warning? I thought you'd be happy to see me. Satan, in the short time I've known you, you've turned my house into a zoo and my daughter into a conduit for satanic magic. Why would I be happy to see you? Satan rubbed his chin. First off, he said, who doesn't like the zoo? Ahem! Frank and Teddy cleared his throat. Uh, right, Satan said. Sorry about the whole bear thing, but seriously, Derek, your daughter was already... Ugh! Miss Hatchetface elbowed him in the ribs, and he stopped talking. Look, I said, if you want to take over the world, I can't stop you. But you can't stay here while you do it. Take over the world? Satan asked. I'm the CEO of hell. Why would I want to take over the world? Ms. Robbins said you were going to take over the earth. And you believed that old bat? She was just trying to get your goat, Darren. That's how she is. I do not understand how a goat is involved, Frank and Teddy said. We both paused, looked at him and then turned back to each other and continued as if he hadn't said anything. Okay, then if you're not here to take over the planet, then why are you here? I asked. Well, being the CEO of hell is stressful. You've got to deal with all those earth politicians and oil executives all the time. I needed a vacation, so I decided to come up here and take my daughters to Disneyland. What? Oh, don't get me wrong. We have theme parks in hell too. But riding the blood luge for the billionth time is a little bit uninspiring. You know what I mean? Not even a little. I sighed and squeezed my eyes shut, rubbing the lids until little fireworks shot into my vision. Fine. Let's go to Disneyland, I guess. There we have it. Satan clapped his hands together, grinning. It's just a nice, wholesome family trip to Disneyland, is all. I'm ready when everyone else is. You mean now? I asked. Yep, the cab's waiting outside, Daniel. We all packed while you were unconscious. My name's not Daniel, it's... But my head went all fuzzy as I tried to think what my name was. Oh boy, Frank and Teddy really did a number on you, huh? Satan said. Don't worry about it. I've got a great doctor down in hell. He'll fix you right up. He can even take that nose down a couple of sizes while he's at it. He's famous up here. You've probably heard of him. Really? What's his name? Dr. Mengele. No thanks, Satan. Before I knew it, Suitcases were being tossed into the van, and we were all piling in like sardines in a can. All of us, except Miss Robbins. I didn't bother to ask where she was. 
Miss Hatchetface was wearing a long black skirt that hid her tail. Satan had simply put on a suit and a cowboy hat, insisting that this made him look human. And Frank and Teddy was dressed in an enormous fuzzy brown bear teddy bear suit. I look ridiculous, he said as he dropped himself into the van's back row of seats. The van tipped to the side under his weight. But you are already a teddy bear, I said. If anything, you just look cute now. It is not my mission's objective to be cute. The taxi driver eyed us in the rear view. Are you guys going to some sort of convention or something? He asked in a thick Brooklyn accent. We are escorting the offspring of Satan to the magical land of Disney. You what now? Don't listen to him, Satan said. We're just a normal American family going on a weekly trip to Disneyland. Right. Hey, wait a second, Satan, I said. Didn't you say we were bringing along your daughters? Where are they? Satan tugged on his collar. They're, uh, waiting for us at the park. Don't worry about it. Miss Hatchetface cocked her head to the side and gave him a quizzical look, but she didn't say anything. Soon, we were on the road. Satan and Sarah were sitting in the van's middle row while Miss Hatchetface was squeezed into the back seat between Frank and Teddy and I. We had wanted to put someone in the front seat, but the cab driver had insisted that he needed to keep his golf clubs there, even moving them out of the trunk to do so. We were about 15 minutes on the road when a thought suddenly occurred to me. Hold on a second, I said, turning to Miss Hatchetface. Why are we taking a cab? I can just drive us. She smiled at me. Do you remember your name yet? She asked. Of course I do. It's... uh..." But my head went all fuzzy again when I tried to think of my name. What is my name again? I asked. (laughs) Your name is Mr. Sillyhead! Sarah giggled, turning around and squinting those bright blue eyes with unrestrained childhood joy. Frank and Teddy turned his big fake head towards me. I was not aware of your new name. Apologies, Lord Sillyhead. Satan didn't answer. He was leaning over the back of the front passenger's side seat and grinning at the driver, asking him questions like, How did you get your skin so tight? And do earth people drink blood? I felt Miss Hatchetface's warm hand close over mine. Your name is Darren, she said. Her big black eyes glistened like ink-coloured jewels. My name is Darren, I repeated. The next thing I remember is rolling up on the gates of Disneyland and piling out of the van, likely the oddest group of tourists to ever darken the magical kingdom's doorstep. The cab driver seemed like he was in a hurry to be rid of us. He nearly slammed the door on Satan's arm when Satan opened it to give him a tip driver took one look at Satan's outstretched palm and peeled out of that lot, muttering an impressive stream of curse words and something about crazies. What did I do? Satan asked innocently, holding his upturned hand out. Are those human finger bones? I asked. Of course. We don't use that as money here, Satan. Oh, well... Where can I change it for human money? Try the police station. Nice try, Jerry. I shrugged. People pointed and whispered at us as we passed through the crowd at the gate. And before I knew it, we were at the front of the line. The Disneyland employee selling tickets was a young, pimply-faced teenager with braces. His mouth hung open so low when he saw us that I thought his tongue might fall out. Uh, How many? He asked. 742 offspring of Satan demand entry to the magical land of Disney. Frank and Teddy boomed. 
Also, us five. What? Satan tugged at his collar and grinned at the kid in the ticket booth, swirling his finger in a circle around his temple and the international sign for crazy. Hold on, Satan, I said. Didn't you say your daughters would be waiting for us here? Uh, They uh, are already in the park. Did you just call him Satan? The kid asked. Satan's just my nickname. Satan responded. He threw the kid a wink and said, You can call me Mr. Satan. Just take the tickets, the kid said, thrusting the tickets under the slot. But I didn't give you any money, Satan replied. That's okay, this one's on me. Wow, what a nice young man, Satan said, turning to us and handing out the tickets. He turned back to the terrified ticket seller and grinned. I know you're not allowed to accept tips, but we'll keep this one just between us two. He then slid the finger bones under the slot in the glass. The ticket seller's eyes blew up to the size of golf balls, but Satan had already turned back towards us. All right, he said, you guys go and have some fun. I need to go handle some business. Without waiting for our responses, he simply turned on his heel and strode off into the park at a brisk pace. Miss Hatchetface stared at Satan's back as he left, a little wrinkle in between her brows as if she was considering something. I wonder what Satan's daughters look like, I said to no one in particular. Huh? Miss Hatchetface responded. I said, I, Frank and Teddy, Miss Hatchet Face cut me off. Yes, Lady Hatchet Face. Can you take care of Darren and Sarah for a bit? I need to go check something. I am honored that the lady would entrust me with such a. My lady, I have not finished speaking. But Miss Hatchet Face either didn't hear or didn't care because she was already 20 feet away, silk skirt swishing around her hips as she hurried after Satan. Sarah looked up at me and grinned. I want to ride all the rides, she squealed. Then we shall ride them all. People turned to stare at Frank and Teddy as he singed baritone and cut through the ambient noise of the park. I hope they have the blood luge. But when we arrived at the first ride, Frank and Teddy were sorely disappointed. What do you mean I am not permitted to ride? He boomed at the cowering teenage worker. It's really a safety requirement, sir, due to your size, he said. If I am too small for your ride, then I shall enlarge myself. Enlarge? I shall enhance my size. Uh, it's okay, Frank and Teddy, I said, smiling and patting him on the arm. I'll take Sarah, and you can wait here with the nice employee. The employee looked rather sick at the prospect of spending more time with Frank and Teddy. Can we get ice cream after? Of course we can. I want a human blood-flavored snow cone. At this, the ride attendant turned so white that even his pimples weren't red anymore. We left Frank and Teddy there and climbed on board the ride. Sarah screamed with joy the entire time, and when we got off, she was hopping around me in circles, hair askew and sticking to her face. That was the best, Daddy. Can we go again? Can we? I almost said yes before I saw Frank and Teddy. He was sitting on the ground with legs splayed out, staring directly at the teenage employee who he still towered over, even sitting down. I couldn't see the expression on his face through the teddy bear costume, but I'd guess he was glaring. We better go get some ice cream first, I said, because Frank and Teddy... 
My voice was washed out by the overwhelming screech of microphone feedback. Then a familiar voice came through all the speakers of the park. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Satan's amplified voice echoed. We at Disneyland have a special treat for you today. Just then, Miss Hatchetface ran up panting. Little beads of sweat dotted her forehead and her hair looked as if it had just attempted to fly away. I tried to stop him, she gasped out, taking big, heavy breaths between each word. He's going to... But she ran out of breath and couldn't finish. Satan's voice continued on, bouncing off the walls of the park. For some time, we have been considering an interdimensional partnership with our colleagues in hell. However, due to some problems during the negotiation, Satan decided, um, we decided to simply give the park to Satan and his demons. Isn't that wonderful? All around the park, people were staring around in all directions, mouth flopping open like fish as Satan's voice went on. So, if you don't want to participate in the grand opening of the very first hellscape on Earth, I suggest you leave within the next 10 seconds. I half expected there to be a mad stampede for the gate, but people just stood there, dumbstruck, looking around as if some rational explanation would simply jump out of the hedges. What did jump out of the hedges? was not an explanation, and definitely not rational. I heard the screams before I saw the reason for them. Big purple behemoths were erupting from under the cobblestone streets, sending pieces of pavement flying. Little leathery creatures buzzed around like mosquitoes on rainbow-coloured wings. Sarah screamed as a 30-foot snake slithered past us, then screamed again when the snake came back to ask where the bathroom was. The behemoths smashed into the rides with huge stone clubs, and the air was filled with clouds of dust, splinters of wood, and chips of shattered brick. The ground beneath us cracked like a humongous egg, and new rides exploded forth, tangled messes of ancient yellow bone and twisted metal. Purple flames erupted around the gates, erasing any hope for escape. People scattered like pool balls after a break, tripping over themselves and running into walls. How is he going to get away with this? I asked, turning to Miss Hatchetface. The U.S. government will send the National Guard down here in a heartbeat. Miss Hatchetface gulped and shook her head. The government's initiated a cover-up, she said. It's part of the terms of sale of a high-ranking politician's soul. The intercom screeched again, and suddenly the park went still as we all paused to listen as the voice of Tina, Satan's secretary, came through. Can Mr. Darren Rogers please report to the front office? I repeat, can Mr. Darren Rogers please report to the front office? Thank you. I could feel the color drain from my face as the others all turned to look at me. I swallowed hard, thinking that whatever Satan had in store for me, it most likely wasn't good. But then... I felt small fingers wrap their way around my hand and squeeze. I looked down to see Sarah smiling up at me. Don't be scared, Daddy, she said. I'll go with you. I smiled back down at her, and we started off towards the office together. What kind of trouble is poor Darren in this time? Next episode will be up very soon. I've launched a new Patreon page for this channel. 
big thanks to those of you who have so generously contributed to it already. I'm currently coming up with rewards for different tiers of contribution, but if you join our little community now, I'll be sure to send you a little something special as well. If you have thoughts as to what you'd like to receive as a patron, leave me a comment below and let me know. That's it for now, my dears. I'll see you again very soon.